What's up, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with a quick video introducing you to a game I've recently started playing again, Dragon Champions. What is Dragon Champions? You've probably seen a lot of content creators you're familiar with uh, doing content for this game now, mostly because they asked a bunch of people to, but also because it has some of its own merits. Dragon Champions is a 5v5 strategy game in the veins of game kind of like Marvel Strike Force, but closer to Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes or Disney Sorcerer's Arena, where you collect characters, uh, build them up, uh, make your team stronger in an attempt to become the Dragon Champion or something. I don't really read too much of the lore. What this game lacks in name recognition, it gains in, honestly, playability. There's a lot of things to do in this game, and I can't cover them all in one video, so I would make separate videos for everything you can do. This is more of an introduction to what happens. Basically, the core of this game is very simple. There are two factions, very similar to games like World of Warcraft. Uh, there is the uh, Order, or close to the Alliance. Basically, your humans, your elves, your uh, good guys throughout history. And then there is your clans, or your horde. These tend to be mostly comprised of demons and goblins and orcs and uh the entire point is you want to collect characters build them up in teams and then use them accordingly now unlike games like marvel strike force uh, wide roster isn't necessary to compete because this game is more of a single player experience than a group experience that's not to say there aren't values to be uh, gained by playing with other people in a guild or an alliance. There are plenty. We'll go into those in future videos. But for now, just know that when you download this game, your experience is going to drive uh, most of how you play the game. You're not going to be relying too heavily on other people for your progress. Uh, simple things to note are when you start the game, you're going to see a lot of offers. I will tell everybody this now. This game is incredibly free-to-play friendly, it is incredibly spender friendly, in that you can constantly spend microtransaction amounts of money, 5, 10, 15 dollars, on things all the time. Uh, it can be a little bit of a trap for some people when they realize, wow, I would absolutely love to spend 10 dollars and keep farming or keep working or immediately rank up a character and those options are there and they're great they do save you a little bit of time usually about between a couple of days to maybe two weeks of farming with all of their offers their offers are reasonably priced we'll get into that in a more detailed video just be aware that when you start playing the game you will see offers for things and you're probably not going to know whether they're worthwhile or not as a rule after a couple of days you'll start figuring out real quick what's worth a dollar, what's worth five dollars, and move on. And as a free-to-play player, even if you're not spending money on advancing your characters, you don't fundamentally change how you play the game, you just change the speed at which you reach the points. That's pretty much it. Uh, just a couple of things I'd like to say. First, in general, it's widely accepted from players of this game for a year plus, as long as it's been out, that the core flow of the game goes with orcs and humans together humans or being the order characters you need to complete order content and orcs being the clan characters you complete to complete clan content obviously uh, you can uh, kind of deviate into other things like goblins or demons or elves those are all great but a lot of one the beginning value of this game comes from the fact that the human characters, when you've reached uh, a high enough level, are capable of unlocking the orc legendary, and the orc characters are capable of unlocking the human legendary, and you can unlock the human legendary character the second you have the opportunity to. It's always open. What are legendaries? Let's talk about that. So characters in this game are simple. There are characters that are farmable. Characters like Snorri, Rantha, Mar. These characters have nodes in the campaign that allow you as a player to spend your resources and obtain them. Character nodes have a limit to the amount of times you can farm them and you can always tell what a character node is by the fact that the character is present on it. For example, I want some Snorri shards. I'm going to go here. I can farm this five times. I choose to do three and two. 
do whatever you like, and move on. Other nodes give you resources. Sometimes it's gear pieces, sometimes it's ability tomes, sometimes it's it's XP uh, for your characters. All of these are, are great resources that you can use. But the note on this one is that you can farm this as many times as you like, providing you have the energy to do so. So that's the core of how you're farming. You're farming for characters, you're farming for gear. You have a lot of energy, you get to spend it however you like. This is generally how you're going to be spending your energy for the most part of the game. Some characters are exclusive to stores or shops. And as you go through, each shop has its own currency that you gain from competing in tournaments, working with your guild, succeeding in arena, which is the uh, status of where you are compared to other players. Completing your tower. All these things will go on in future videos. And, of course, gold, uh, PvP, etc. And, you know, spending real money. Uh, these characters have the, the core of how you're building your team. So, obviously, characters that you can farm on campaign nodes are going to be way easier to access than characters you can buy in the store because you have to wait to obtain more currency or work harder or become better to get that. The last types of characters are event characters. These uh, are variable. Sometimes the events are up all the time. For example, you can always unlock the character of Solius, the human legendary, anytime your team is strong enough to. The requirement is orcs says it right here, and you should probably stick to the requirements to the best of your ability because this game's not very easy and it's very unforgiving if you're not strong enough to do the content. But like I said, anytime you have a team at level 60 who's got this requirements, you can do these fights. Other events, uh, for example, General Murdoch's strategy, another legendary character, he's unlocked by using demons, and you are going to want a handful of them at certain star levels, which is how you progress your characters. I'm pretty much going on and on about stuff you might already know, or you might figure out in the first couple of seconds of the game. The idea is that there's constantly events with different requirements that will give you more access to things that you otherwise wouldn't, which will incentivize you as a player to work on multiple characters. As a note, sometimes in the early stages of the game, you're going to see events and tournaments and just types of things that you personally feel like, oh, I can't work on this. Should I work on these characters? Well, that's up to you, your wallet, and your time. In me, I generally say stick with one, maybe two things at a time. So work on your orc team, work on your humans team, make sure those guys are together because they help each other, and then move on to other things like demons or goblins or whatever you like. There are characters that are clearly better than others. This is not the video for that. There's a lot of details and discussion, but if you ever want to know what's going on, how other people are playing and what's happening, you can always go to rankings, see who the strongest arena characters or tournament fighters are, or who's got the strongest stuff. I would always recommend not looking at whoever spends the most money in the game because they tend to not pay attention to the value of specific characters. They just like seeing big shiny numbers. But for stuff like arena leaders, you could probably go around, click on one or more of the, the potential people who are on the top of arena. Let's just scroll down a little bit and let's see what he's doing. Anytime you click on a person, you could check out their entire roster with their investments. You can sort their roster any way you want. So if you want to know what orcs are interesting, you can just look here and say, oh, this guy really likes orcs. Level 80 is the level cap. The gold circle is the highest gear tier you can get. Seven stars is the highest character stars uh, to obtain. And you can kind of figure out. You can also get more details about the character. Like, what did they do? Did they put anything special on him? Runes. What are runes? All questions that are great. All questions for another video. Same thing with artifacts. So you can get a good idea of what's going on by looking at what people who are in your arena uh, grouping or people who are playing in tournaments with you are doing. That's pretty much my, my introduction to this game. There's going to be a lot of questions. Hopefully the videos I release in the future are going to be helpful in answering those questions. And if you have any other questions about this game, 
comment below and let me know in the chat or in the comment section if there's something specific because if I'm not working on it I don't know I would like to tell everybody that I've played this game on and off for about a year I am by no means an expert in this game but I'm pretty good at mobile games in general especially these types so I probably have some insights that might help you along one last thing if by some chance you do download this game and you're interested in it you can go here click use promo code and type in that's not correct Tony's gift all caps if you like, and you can just get something for free from me, Tony. So if you're interested, by all means do so. I will say one thing though, if you try to use this and you're over level 15, it won't work right now. If, you, if you're over level 15 and you want one, reach out to me on Discord or on my stream and we'll figure out something else to help you. This is just a little bit of resources to help you start off in the game. Hopefully it helps you enjoy it. That's pretty much everything I have. If you're interested in more, comment, like this video, and comment and let me know. Hey, I can't wait to see more. And if you're not interested, you probably stopped watching, so you're not listening to this point. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. My name has been Tony Skinjili. Have a good night. Have a great day. And I'll catch you guys later.